Konnichiwa everybody, it is I, Erica Clash, and welcome back to Nerd Alert. I am here with my special guest this week, Kai Kai B. Michaels. Hi everybody. Now Kai Kai, you are part of Pasto Gore with myself, my previous guest Rockham Sakura, and our videographeress, Miss Cash Monet. And what are we doing today? I think we're gonna talk about some motherfucking kaiju. So today we are counting down the top 10 most dragalicious kaiju from the Godzilla universe. So Kai Kai B. Michaels, what is a kaiju? What is the dictionary definition of a kaiju? Do we have kaiju because Kai's here? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Basically just giant monsters. Um, they appear in uh, Godzilla films which date back to, oh gosh, when was the first Godzilla Well, the first Godzilla film came out in 1954. 54. Now, traditionally, these giant monsters are played by people in rubber suits. So they make these suits from scratch, and they build miniature sets, and they kick ass. They kick each other's ass, they kick the city's ass, they stomp on people, all the good things. In the number 10 spot, we have Mechagodzilla. Now, Mechagodzilla is one of my all-time favorite kaiju. It's one of the big five. Uh, uh, Godzilla Kaiju, and I love specifically the 1970s version, which is like the alien invader version of Mechagodzilla. Yeah, it's so fierce. All of the angles and all of the like. <laughs> yeah. I love that costume. And the artil artillery is like out of this world. Like the nails come off. The <laughs> So true. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Godzilla also um, reveals out of like a fake Godzilla facade into Mechagodzilla, which is one of like the gaggiest moments. So I think like w whether it's that or the head, it would just lend itself to reveals. That's true. Uh, Mechagodzilla is made of space titanium. So we're going to have to stone that costume with an inch of its life, I think. And for number nine, we have Jet Jaguar! I love Jet Jaguar. He is one of the campiest uh, all-time characters like oh, in, yeah. in all of Godzilla. Um, I would really love to see like a modern take on Jet Jaguar with like that kind of leans into the camp value. Um, uh, I'm thinking like Naomi Smalls in her um, Super Queen outfit. Yes. I've also done a Jet Jaguar look and number. I did a, I did a fisting number because Jet Jaguar's theme song is all about, you know, punching enemies down. So. Punch, punch, punch. What's really cool about Jet Jaguar is just like with Mechagodzilla, it's a mecha, so lots of sparkle. Um, and then the way I did it was I kind of created like sort of severe shoulders, but like a really cinched waist, and sort of tried to make the uh, the pattern on the actual suit kind of complement a feminine figure. And I feel like that costuming in general is just super. It's super human. Yeah, it's yeah, human, it is. It is very human. It's it's got a lot of elements that just occurred naturally in the human form, so it's super easy to translate that into a costume. In our number eight spot, we have King Caesar. Oh my god, this costuming. It, ah. Isn't it fabulous? Hair. That's all I have That's to all say. I see when I think about this, like hair. sickening hair, like furry fantasy. Um, King Caesar is from the original Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, another protector of humanity. Um, he's also based on uh, the Okinawan uh, Shisa statues. Yeah, it's a really great translation too because if you Google the statues, that's basically what they look like. They look just like King Caesar. It's great. It's really like a Japanese person's interpretation of like a lion without ever really seeing a lion, <laughs> um, which is that cultural exchange that I think you see a lot in Godzilla movies. Yeah. It's really sickening. Um, so getting to like interpret all of that through a drag lens would be really cool. The best thing, part about King Caesar is that you have to sing to him in order to awaken him. So only a member of the Japanese royal family can can like summon him. So like it's kind of like a drag queen. You hear music and you're like, oh girl, I'm awake. Yes. Yes. You're, they press play on your track. <laughs> And then you're like, bitch, I'm here! <laughs> Coming in at number seven is Space Godzilla. That costume is one of the most. Like, it does the most, always. It does the most. She's kind of a witch bitch, right? Like, she's got crazy crystals going on. Yeah. Like, out of the shoulders. Space Godzilla in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is probably one of the meanest characters you'll ever see. True. He kidnaps the baby Godzilla. He sets up a whole crystal-like you know fortress fortress in the middle of tokyo <laughs> um he kicks a lot of ass too like he kicks godzilla's ass he kicks mogera's ass in this movie um she does not play one of the most villainous looking ever which i think would translate so well to like a sort of a high like a horror glam just high 
high fashion kind of look. You know, huge crystals like shoulder pads, l touches of neon, touches of like cosmic, oh, yes. uh, like maybe a cosmic print in there somewhere. And the number six spot we have Biolante. Now, Biolante is one of the few decidedly female kaiju out That's there. Right. So she already automatically deserved a spot on the list just for that. I feel like her backstory too is it's super aesthetic. She's made out of a rose, human DNA, and Godzilla DNA. Biolante has a rose form and an adult, like like a final form. Which one do you are, do you love in particular? I mean, probably the rose form. I'm such a sucker for the whole like this is obviously this thing. I, I love Biolante's costuming in general. I love that. Um, I love it from start to finish, but the rose form is just like, it's a freaking rose, but also a monster. Like, that's kind of badass. Coming in at number five is King Ghidorah. <sighs> so, first of all, this would make a sickening drag king look. I feel like you could wear a King Ghidorah look and do like a Sylvester song. I mean... Like disco, yeah. gold. And of course, it's in the name, King Ghidorah. Right, exactly. Yeah. He's fucking king and we love our drag kings and king Ghidorah is like the arch nemesis of godzilla it's like the, the joker of the godzilla world the original king Ghidorah has the perfect like little it's like like a like a like a cackle chirp <laughs> it's so precious in our number four spot we have gigan so first of all it's a little limp wristed right she is limp wristed <laughs> she is a queen miss gigan <laughs> We love her. She is probably like the second in command as far as like like the, the like alien invader villains of Godzilla. Like That's they, uh, Gigan actually fought alongside King Ghidorah in Godzilla vs. Gigan. So it was like two of the heavy hitters of like villains in Godzilla together. And I love a good mohawk. I think Gigan will make a great mohawk moment. Great mohawk. Um, I mean, he has a buzzsaw in front of, like, all the way down to his puss. Uh, that's it's amazing. Like a, yeah. Okay, talk about um, anti-rape deterrence. <laughs> oh my god, if only. <laughs> Coming in at number three, Monster X. I happen to love Monster X as well. It only made a really, really short appearance in Godzilla Final Wars, but it is just one of the scariest all-time I think so. I mean, I feel like most of the kaiju start off as being really campy and maybe they get a grittier update, but this one just kind of stayed like terrifying. Yeah, it captured that like sort of like modern Godzilla feeling very well. I mean, it can shoot beams, like energy beams out of its eyes. That's right. A lot of Godzilla characters like can shoot energy beams, but not all of them from their fucking eyeballs. Right, I mean, that's a bad side eye right there. Yeah. You don't want to get that. That is like mal de ojo. So Monster X design has great armor making potential. Uh, there's lots of layering you can do. There are lots of ways you can build up that costume. And I mean, there are skulls built into the costume too. They're like, they're, but they're like half skulls, like one on one side and one on the other. It's like, it's like there was like a bigger head that just split open and then just like chilled out on the sides. It's so yeah, weird. It's Monster X also has one of the most sickening reveals. Um, if you've seen Godzilla Final Wars, it comes out of a meteor <laughs> and then lands like right behind Godzilla and is like, hey girl, <laughs> and they duke it out. In the number two spot, we have Destroya. Oh, boy. We are getting to the nitty gritty of this list, y'all, because Destroya is like, you want to talk about wearing the most? <laughs> okay, first of all, the name. Yes, first the, of name. All, the name. The name. Oh, God. So she's Destroya with an AH. Yeah. Because they probably couldn't copyright Destroyer. No, you can't. And that makes sense. And you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of a translation thing there. Yes. Well, because, well, one of the fun things too is like the moments when, when the Japanese names kind of get converted, like they wanted to call it Destroyer, but it can't, it comes out Desutroya. Because Destroyer is one of those uh, kaiju that really does not give a shit. Like it is the literal embodiment of the chemical that killed the original 1954 Godzilla. So um, this is actually one of the few kaiju that Godzilla wasn't able to beat, actually. Wings. The Red wings, and black. The Ugh. wings, uh, yeah, and the color combination, it just lends itself to horror drag so well. Like red and black and the sort of like deep burgundy, um, oh, just so sickening. The fangs, the spikes, like the tail, like there's just everything you can think of that, that you know. And then this, this detail here, yeah. this, um, 
It's it's like a flower almost, like ready to open, or it's like a flower bud. It's like a like a little anus flower, mm. and it just like it shoots like a like a like a ray of oxygen destroyer like at the at the enemy. Oh, that's amazing. And our number one spot is Mothra is our number one. Ah. Uh. Mothra is number one. I mean, those wings. I'm all. I mean, there's so many great kaiju wings, but it almost Mothra. feels. It almost feels like a cop out for us to put Mothra at number one, just because it's so obvious. But that's why she is number one because she is the queen of the monsters. She is. She really is. Um, she is one of the few female kaiju. She's a mother. She's a defender of humanity. She is sort of has like this quiet sort of feminine power. It that Miss Mothra has. Power. It's very self-assured. She dies and or sacrifices herself in most movies. Yes. Oh god, but that's pretty feminine, right? But it but again, it's like a different sort of power because she usually does that um, to kind of clear the way for Godzilla to, to, to shut it down. But we want to encourage you, if you love any of these kaiju just as much as we do, Take your ass to the craft store yes. and make one of these looks. Bring these characters from Japanese cinema to life. Yeah, and if you have some cool Godzilla cosplays, tag us on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or send the carrier pigeon with a picture attached to it. I don't know. Kai Kai Michaels, thank you so much for joining me on this list of the top 10 most dragalicious Godzilla kaiju. Fans, if you feel like we missed any Godzilla kaiju that you think should have been on this list, please let us know in the comments. I'm Erica Clash. And I'm Kai Kai B. Michaels. Bye. Bye. Miss you forever. Thank you for watching Trish TV. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please support us on Flipcause. The link's in the description. Bye.